Pennsylvania CDL has mad practice test. Question 1. Where are the two main places where the hazardous identification number appear? On the shipping paper and on the package. On the package and on paperwork at the shipping point of origin. On the shipping papers and on a secret document in the driver's wallet. On the package and on paperwork at the shipping destination. Answer On the shipping paper and on the package. Question 2. Which of the following materials would be acceptable floor liner for moving division 1.1 or 1.2 materials? Carbon steel. Non-ferrous metal. Stainless steel. All of the above. Answer. Non-ferrous metal. Question 3. What is the purpose of a driver placarding his or her vehicle? Forcing other drivers to stay 20 feet away in every direction. Communicating risk. Giving people something interesting to look at while driving. Warning those with children to drive in another lane. Answer. Communicating risk. Question 4. What is a technical name? The name for a hazardous material most commonly used on the street. The name for a hazardous material most commonly used in the trucking community, accepted as standard. The medical terms for hazardous materials used by medical personnel. The name for a hazardous material used in scientific journals and texts. Recognized as its chemical and microbiological name. Answer The name for a hazardous material used in scientific journals and texts, recognized as its chemical and microbiological name. Question 5. What are shippers trying to accomplish when they package the material? Make it easy to open and close. Make it easy to identify. Make it as light as possible. All of the above. Answer Make it easy to identify. Question 6 How often should you check the tires on a placard at trailer that has dual tires? Each time you stop. Once every three hours. Once every hundred miles. Start of each day and every time you stop. Answer. Start of each day and every time you stop. Question 7. How far away must you stay from a bridge, tunnel, or building if you are carrying division 1.2 or 1.3 materials? 300 feet or more. 500 feet or more. 200 feet or more. 100 feet or more. Answer 300 feet or more. Question 8. Which of the following is a necessary qualification for non-bulk packaging? Max. Net mass less than 400 kg or less if used as a receptacle for a solid. A max. Capacity of 450 liters or less, if it is used as a receptacle for liquids. Max. Water capacity less than 454 kilograms or less if used as a receptacle for gases. All of the above. Answer. All of the above.
Question 9. Which of the following is not an acceptable type of marking for hazardous materials? Descriptive name in Roman print. Name in italics. UN marks. Identification number. Answer. Name in italics. Question 10. Do you need to stop before railroad crossing if you are hauling 100 pounds of Division 4.3 materials? Only if the arm is down telling vehicles to stop. Yes. No. Impossible to tell without more information. Answer. Yes. Question 11. What is the main difference between a portable tank and a cargo tank? Being filled while on versus while off the vehicle. Portable tanks must additionally show the owner or lessee's name on them. Permanent or temporary attachment. All of the above. Answer. All of the above. Question 12. Cargo tanks are Filled while they are off your vehicle, then attached for transportation. Only made in one size. Bulk packaging permanently attached to your vehicle. Bulk packaging temporarily attached to your vehicle. Answer Bulk packaging permanently attached to your vehicle. Question 13. Which of the following three hazard classes should not be placed into a temperature control trailer, one with a heater, air conditioner unit? Classes 1, 3, and 4. Classes 1, 3, and 6. Classes 1, 4, and 5.1 Classes 1, 2.1 and 3 Answer Classes 1, 2.1 and 3 Question 14. A safe haven is A place that has been approved to park unattended vehicles carrying explosives. A place to stay once you have reported your company for illegal activity. The slang term for the last stop at the end of your driving day when carrying hazardous materials. A place where it is safe to dump any kind of hazardous materials. Answer A place that has been approved to park unattended vehicles carrying explosives. Question 15. If you are carrying Division 1.2 or 1.3 materials, how far away must you park from the traveled portion of the roadway? At least 10 feet. At least 20 feet. At least half a mile. At least 5 feet. Answer. At least 5 feet. Question 16. Which hazard classes must you never smoke, or perform any activity involving fire, within 25 feet of? Class 5.2 only. Class 1 only. Classes 1, 2, 3 and 4. Class 4.2 only. Answer. Classes 1, 2, 3 and 4. Question 17. If you are already carrying 100 pounds of silver cyanide, what precautions must you take if you are given papers at dock to carry 100 cartons of battery ast? 
inform someone and not load the battery acid. Make sure the battery acid is loaded on top of the silver cyanide. Make sure the silver cyanide is loaded on top of the battery acid. Make sure there is plenty of space between the two. Answer Inform someone and not load the battery acid. Question 18. Which of the following is not something you need to know in order to determine if you need to use placards? The manufacturing date for the materials. The substance or materials hazard class. The amount of a substance or material being shipped. The amount of all hazardous materials of all classes you are carrying in your vehicle. Answer The manufacturing date for the materials. Question 19. In what location must you keep your shipping papers which describe any hazardous materials? In a locked glove compartment anytime you are outside of the vehicle. On the driver's seat anytime you are outside of the vehicle. In a fireproof pouch under the driver's seat that you can reach while you are driving. In a fire safe pouch under the passenger seat while you are driving. Answer On the driver's seat anytime you are outside of the vehicle. Question 20 The Emergency Response Guidebook, ERG, was created by the National Department of Transportation, so it is used nationwide is studied by emergency personnel to help keep the public safe. Contains an index of hazardous material ID numbers which is why you must label things correctly. All of the above. Answer All of the above. Question 21 the two other places where the hazardous identification number must appear are On the back of the truck and inside the glove compartment Any bulk packaging in the cargo tanks On the gas tank and a sticker in the glove compartment On a temporary license plate holder and the steering wheel Answer any bulk packaging in the cargo tanks. Question 22. Your engine runs a pump when you are delivering compressed gas. Should you turn off your engine before or after you unhook the hoses after finishing that delivery? Leave it on the entire time. Turn it off on arrival, use other power to run the pump. Turn it off after unhooking. Turn it off before unhooking. Answer Turn it off before unhooking. Question 23. What action should you take if there is no phone available and you discover your hazardous materials shipment leaking at a rest stop? Keep driving. Slowly and cautiously, until you reach a phone. Keep driving for help as quickly as possible. Send someone for help with all the necessary information. Leave your truck parked with emergency lights and walk for help. Answer Send someone for help with all the necessary information. Question 24. A placarded vehicle must carry what type of fire extinguisher? One with a rating of 10 AB minimum. One with a rating of 5 BC minimum. One with a rating of 10 BC minimum. One with a rating of... Answer. 
one with a rating of 10 BC minimum. Question 25. Which of the following hazard classes utilizes a transport index in order to determine how much of it can be loaded on a single vehicle for transport? Class 3. Flammable liquids. Class 7. Radioactive materials. Class 4. Live chickens. Class 1. Explosives. Answer. Class 7, Radioactive Materials Thank you for watching the video and wish you will get your driver license soon.